El Instituto Weizmann es un instituto muy importante de investigación, como todos saben, está en Israel. Y dentro de todas las áreas de investigación que tiene el Instituto Weizmann, que tiene una facultad de biología, de química, etc., una de las prioridades del instituto es también cómo investigar, cómo mejorar la educación, hacer investigación y cómo mejorar la enseñanza de las ciencias. ¿Ok? Pasa, por favor. I hope it's true, but I want to tell you that I, they asked me to give a master class, but usually I don't teach students. I do teach teachers, and what we do, we develop materials, and we work with teachers that introduce them to school. And what I'm going to do today is to demonstrate a, a lesson that we did with the school in Israel just last week. And uh, it's focused, on all the work we do in this school is focused on uh, democratic decisions and dilemmas. All kinds of dilemmas that all of us face in our lives in every age. And we would like the students, and this is what I would like to ask you, to express their opinion, their own opinions. And they uh, also think about to teach some material, as I will show you. And then to, to see whether they change their opinion, what, what do they think the country should do or what should the authorities decide as you will see in the end. So what we will talk today will be about the, the vaccines dilemma. Did you learn about vaccines? Do you know okay. what yes. So let's see a movie, a short, a very short video. <coughs> Don't you ask questions about this. Now we have a we move a bit in the room. If you agree with this statement that is written up there, move to this side of the room. This will be the side of the agree. If you disagree, move to this side. Think about what is your opinion. Do you think we should all get vaccinated? Is it a priority or is it a And all of you agree? All those that here? Yeah. Now think about, and you too, think about it as well, whether you agree in your heart, you just feel like it's uh, something that uh, we shouldn't do? Or do you have any reasoning for a real argument why you think we should be vaccinated? Those that think from their heart, do you see the uh, sign agree in heart? And there are those that don't agree, uh, I'm sorry, those that agree and have an argument for vaccination, please stand there. So now we have four people stand in two corners here, in one corner here, no one agree from their heart with this statement, right? So who wants to give the argument? Why is that? It's not so serious. you want to give an argument? Yeah, that's right. Why do you have a virus or bacteria in your system? 
y tu cuerpo es capaz de generar anticuerpos ya que te lo entrega debilitado, te entrega una parte de la toxina de este virus. So the bacteria or viruses are introduced into your body and your body is able to create a, a, a and they use it in a immune response to the autoimmune patient. And that way. Also because throughout immunity you are less um, able to spread to spread it and to Yeah. Uh, vaccines have proven uh, through history that they are uh, that they work. So if I decide not to vaccinate my kids, so I'm not only risking their lives but everyone else's life because if they get the the virus or anything, they can they can get it to someone else as well. So I'm not only risking my life and my kids and my family, I'm risking everyone else and that, that, that is what have been happening with some uh, diseases that have come back, uh, diseases that were all already eradicated, uh, have come back because of the vaccine hesitancy movement in the United States. So that's the reason why I believe vaccines are. You have very good pictures. So let's see, is there someone that wants to raise another argument, a different one? Yes. Uh, and sometimes, uh, like the anti vaccine movement uh, says that. Some of the kids had some reactions, allergic reactions, ah, this seizures this and stuff. Kids. And I think that these cons of the vaccines are way better than the cons of not getting vaccinated. Okay, okay we'll see what, what the others have to say. Can, can I say something else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think a lot of people here know there was a, an article um, that was written some years ago by, by someone that said that the vaccines provoke um, uh, autism in kids and just one day after that it was um, published. out, published, yes, a, the same person w published another article saying that it wasn't true. So the people, the anti-vaccine movement is provoked by this article, but the people don't read the the the, the response to that to that one that was written one day after that. Okay, so we see. Let's talk about the arguments for and against very shortly. We now talk about the scientific argument why uh, we think we should get vaccinated. But as we said, there were other opinions, so let's opinions, so let's hear them. Eh, bueno. No estoy en contra del movimiento de, de vacunas, yo estoy vacunado y voy a vacunar a mis hijos por el resto de mi vida y yo voy a hacer que mis hijos vacunen a sus hijos. Y no estoy de este lado por simplemente llevar la contraria, sino la pregunta fue, ¿es una prioridad para nuestra salud? Y yo no creo que sea una prioridad para nuestra salud. El cuidarnos nosotros y tener eh, pues una buena dieta y tener eh, hacer ejercicio, por ejemplo, son cosas que podría evitar que nos tengamos que vacunar y aún así mantenernos sanos. Entonces no es necesario, no es una prioridad para nuestra salud, pero sí apoya mucho. Entonces no estoy en contra de ustedes, simplemente estoy con esta opinión. Okay. Because priority is being healthy and eat well and do some exercise and that's being healthy and that can substitute the vaccination. So it's not a priority if you are healthy. Por ejemplo, sí nos podríamos cuidar, comer sano y todo, pero por ejemplo el tétanos. No es mi decisión quererme cortar con material oxidado. Entonces, si es que me corto con este tipo de material, puedo, puedo obtener este, este tipo de enfermedades y no es de que fue mi decisión. O sea, no es de que pude prevenirlo comiendo sano o haciendo algo que esté a mi disposición. Okay, so he is saying, I can eat well and do some exercise, but it's not my decision to cut myself with something oxidized, rusted, and get uh, tetanus. 
So it's not me who decide to get tetanus, and tetanus can be uh, not interesting. And I thought you should Mario with some of what he said, but also uh, I think that in the argument you read vaccination for all. I don't think that all the people need to vaccinate of all things. Uh, it, it's not a rational uh, argument. It's uh, uh, on my experience what I think. Um, but it's not that you need to vaccinate for all the things that you can see out in the world and uh, do it every day uh, or every year or um, all the time. You need, like, for right now with the coronavirus or, or something like that, you can vaccinate uh, for that, but in certain areas that um, the disease is um, spreading or it's, it's like a dangerous area for that disease. And it's not that you need to vaccinate all the people for all the things in all the world. Yeah, I think the vaccination for all, everybody gets vaccinated, not necessarily for all the diseases. But I think it's meant for all the people. And actually, even biologically, you are right. Maybe some people cannot be vaccinated. Maybe they are immune suppressed or all, kind, all kinds of situations. There are certain people that cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons. Okay. Or maybe babies are too young for that or something like this. But it's in general, whether the population should be vaccinated. Okay. So do you disagree? Um, yeah, I still disagree. I still disagree? Yes. Yeah. What is the why? Oh. Actually, you feel this way. You don't yeah. need to have a reasoning, actually. No, I, I, I just, it's, I, in I my just, experience, it's, it's what I feel. I, I don't think that all the people need to be vaccinated. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's all the diseases or or not, but you don't need to be vaccinated all the time for X or, for X or Y disease. Uh, okay. So, let's say now, see, actually you said you, you, you learned about it. So maybe someone wants to explain how does it work. What is the mechanism? Okay, there are three types of vaccines. Y cada una tiene una parte de la bacteria distinta. O sea, no. No. <risa> Las vivas atenuadas, que puede ser una bacteria limitada, y las actuales, y una más. Muy bueno, en el momento que entra tu cuerpo, tu cuerpo la detecta y crea anticuerpos para ella. Entonces, cuando llega la bacteria en sí más fuerte y renovada, ya están los anticuerpos para Defender se puede decir. Y la tercera no se ha ido. Y no se And what happens when you inject the attenuated Se quedan anticuerpos. The body creates antibodies. And then, y después, and then, llega la bacteria, and the bacteria yeah. gets into the body. El cuerpo ya se puede defender contra ella. O sea, se podría decir que no se... Ajá, se podría... Me encanta. Le pone... O sea, que la... Que el... Que el virus cuando es inyectado al cuerpo es... Ah... Entonces se podría decir que, o sea, que el virus cuando es inyectado al cuerpo es como, es como una llave, ¿no? Y entonces tienes la puerta, se podría decir. Entonces cuando, cuando entra el virus al cuerpo, entonces el, el cuerpo crea, o sea, una, una cerradura de la misma, o sea, de la misma forma que es, que, es la, que es el virus. Entonces, cuando llega mucho más fuerte, cuando llega realmente cuando te está atacando y no te están inyectando, ya es la llave perfectamente en caja y entonces ya no ataca bien. ¿Dónde está este, esta llave, esta gatomarca, donde existe ese código? Sí, ya está todo lo que no hay en el cuerpo. Ahora sí, ya no me he dicho. ¿Dónde está esta llave? ¿Dónde está esta llave? ¿Dónde está esta llave? Ok, so, what we will do now, we'll do a little bit of working groups.
looking into the mechanism, it's a sim very simple what I have, it's not all the details, but it will give the idea that I think you, you learned, so you will remember, just that you will remember it from the, from the drawing. So maybe we go back to sitting groups, and then we go back to... to the another movie, mm -hmm. we chose a, a disease, which is one which was very widespread, and they, it was eradicated, and it caused ketosis or the whooping cough. So we, are, we already discussed this question, and now I want to see you guys, uh, just to look at, into the mechanism. You can take one page. Like it's two different pages. Ah, it's two, two different pages. Like the full of I know there will be so many. So maybe two? No, estoy un poco perdida. Otra vez. Mira, estos son ya, ya está debilitado. Luego acá, luego los white blood cells. Entra acá, se pega, se pega, se pega, se pega y se y se enferma la. Estas estas partículas de aquí son los anticuerpos. Ok. Entonces los va sacando y estos anticuerpos no se conocen a esta bacteria que va a debilitar. Y entonces ahora si al final dice ya tengo una bacteria
was important to know is that there are memory cells that are in the body and when we are re-exposed to a bacteria, a virus, each one of them, after immunization or after we were once ill, the bacteria, uh, there are the memory cells that attack the, those, uh, the, those bacteria or viruses. So, what happens with the flu? Why do we need to get vaccinated every year? No voy a decir español, porque los virus evolucionan, cambian de cepa.
the immunity in a population. And actually, there are two situations here. So I'm asking you, can an unvaccinated individual influence the health of others? Yes. So how? Anyway, if, if I'm not vaccinated, and like we would say that in this specific community, this disease is already eradicated, I can like start it all over again. But there are, what they, it's shown here on the right is the population that most of the people oh, are vaccinated. Oh, the ones that are not vaccinated. The ones that are vaccinated are supposed to be protected. Yeah, but actually what happens in a population when most, or most of the people are not vaccinated? No, yeah. So what, what did you do? What, what is what is called community protection? What does it mean? <coughs> So even if like two people are not vaccinated, it's very minimal the probability that they are gonna get infected because they create like this immunity for all the people in the community. But people are using this as an excuse to not vaccinate their children, so they create the other side where they cause an outbreak. So why why is it? Why why there is an outbreak? Because they say, right, well, I do not vaccinate my kid because all the other kids are vaccinated. And instead of having a majority that is vaccinated, it's a majority that is susceptible. So people get sick, and because nobody's vaccinated, they just keep spreading the disease. And then, as you said, the probability, if I am not vaccinated, that I will meet someone that is not vaccinated is higher on the left than on the right. So actually as, as many as possible in the community that we get vaccinated, we are better in, we're better off as a community because there are people always that cannot be vaccinated. And I think one of you also explained this argument. So I think with this, we more or less looked at the arguments for vaccination. Now let's, let's continue with the, those that are against, the, against vaccination. Arguments, um, written arguments from, for example, from this or from others that are for or against a uh, vaccination. And also we have empty uh, notes that you can write, your own, uh, write one argument per, uh, per note. But I gave, she's not back yet. Jeremy, no, exactly. Yeah, I guess since I just had, I didn't know there would be so many. So I didn't prepare myself, so she went to zero six. six. So actually what we have now is one book. So oh, that's true. It was a kid that was not vaccinated from a family of, I think, six or maybe more kids. That their parents decided not to vaccinate the kids. But when he was 18 years old, he sued his mother for not vaccinating him. And he went and got all the vaccination. And what was shown here was what he presented in Congress in the US protesting against what their parents did to him by deciding not to immunize them, not to immunize the kids. But also what we saw was his mother that said that she's proud of her kid, that he is standing for his own opinion, but still she didn't agree with him. And what we have in the notes is also what she's saying against vaccinations. And there are others, very, other very famous cases where parents were against vaccination of their own kids. And this is what we have on the, on the notes that have been. So what so we actually we wanted to do... <laughs> actually, the activity was to classify it to the two different groups. So we did it for, for each group to classify those to two groups. So we just made it or we read it.
a favor. Lo que pide la profesora es que primero clasifiquen el pro y contra y luego lo clasifiquen en los cuatro cuadrantes, ¿no? Lo de estoy de acuerdo porque hay un argumento o de acuerdo porque es más un sentimiento, desacuerdo por un sentimiento o desacuerdo porque hay un argumento. Esto sin y argumento. Y luego tienes que escoger no, una de las tarjetas que es diferente a tu propia opinión. ¿Pero cuál es el argumento de la ley? Ajá. O sea, no dice por qué. No, yo sí que como cuál es el argumento de la ley. en el cuadrante del salón. ¿Qué? 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 Eso es vacuna y cerebro. A favor, a favor, a favor y cerebro. Eso sí es. Yo creo que la ley que es
go to the bottom line, which is the last question that I want to ask you. And then consider, when you answer this question, consider the information you got from the <coughs> and Christ, about what is your opinion. And as I said, the aim is to reach a democratic decision and really expose your own opinion. So the question is, can national authorities enforce vaccination on the population? We looked into the mechanism. We were convinced that as a population, we should be vaccinated. And it's by, by that we get a community and a herd immunity. But still, there are parents, as we, we talk, mm -hmm. they choose not to vaccinate their children. Mm -hmm. And they, in a way, they put all of us at risk. So, can the national authorities, or should maybe, should be said, enforce vaccination on the population? So, we do what we did at the beginning. Everybody choose if you agree, if you have a reason. Not only that, if a majority of, uh, of a certain population is vaccinated, then even if the minority is not vaccinated and you don't obl oblige them to vaccinate, the outbreak won't happen either way because the majority is vaccinated. What you should do is that in the populations that are least favored, that are mostly poor, and cannot get vaccinated and want to get vaccinated, then the government should give these vaccinations to them, to the ones who want to get vaccinated but can't, because it's their decision to do so, but cannot, uh, they can't, uh -huh, they, can't, they can buy the vaccine or actually like, get vaccinated. So it's not to, I don't think it's to uh, enforce vaccination upon everyone, but to uh, give the option of free vaccination to everyone. Yes. The key is to inform people, so uh, they can take a, their own decision, giving scientific research information, not just subjective information, but they should be able to take their own decisions instead of forcing them onto doing something they don't know about. I think it's 
more of a personal issue than um, a general one. If you believe in a certain religion and you're not supposed to get vaccinated for X or Y, I think that you are in power, you're an authority to make your own decisions for your own body. And if you don't want to vaccinate, that's on you. If everybody else wants to vaccinate, then they're protected from whatever disease. But you don't have to get vaccinated if you don't want to. And the government shouldn't have the ability to um, give those laws out. They can also obligate like parents to to give education to their children, and they can also um, obligate obligate you to not uh, commit a crime or to not uh, murder someone. So, like, if you if people don't get vaccinated, they're putting everyone's health in, in, in risk. They're putting like everyone at risk because you can you can start a um, epidemic and. Um, like all sort of things like that. And also, for me, it's kind of impossible to think that you you want to educate people because, the, I mean, there's seven billion people in this world. You cannot expect that with some TED Talks or with some, I don't know, posters or, or something, you will educate everyone to, to, to inform them why they should get vaccinated. I mean, it's... It's impossible to, to get to each and every one of, of, of the people here to, to, to try to make them understand why they should get vaccinated. So for me, I mean, just uh, attack the problem like um, more aggressively and just stop uh, from happening. I don't know. No, it's como que creo que podrían obligarlos, pero tampoco creo que podría, o sea, no creo que el gobierno podría obligarlos, porque no es algo que sea como matar, o sea, como algo, o sea, tan como grave para la persona, pero creo que podría llegar a ser, o sea, una enfermedad que puede llegar a, o sea, como a, como a pasarse entre personas y llegar así a contagiar a más gente. Y aparte de eso, eh, en México, en la carrera, eh, de medicina hay una parte un momento en el que te mandan a, a, a vacunar a gente a tocar puertas de casas y a literal vacunar a gente y yo creo que eso es algo que el gobierno de México pues hace y que es como como si fuera políticamente obligatorio entonces creo que pues she, uh, she said that she believes that it's not so, uh, something that Vanessa said like murdering someone it's not as bad so she does not believe that it is right for the government to obligate or force the people to <coughs> vaccinate. And also she says that in Mexico, there is a part in the medicine a career where some of the uh, students have the task to go to the people, to the people houses and knock their doors and get their kids vaccinated. And she says that she does not believe that it is like politically correct to, uh, to obligate them, to get the... I don't know. But can I answer to Nathan? Yeah. So what Nathan said about 
age about thinking that it's not right to make a law to obligate the people to to get vaccinated. Uh, I actually think it, it is necessary to make that law because human rights says say that you you can do whatever you want, but you cannot um, uh, affect or endanger someone else. So I think by not getting vaccinated, you are actually in, in, uh, endangering someone else. You are actually uh, making the possibility of opening the possibility of someone else getting infected. So I actually think it's kind of violating the human rights not getting the vaccine because it's not only affecting you. So that is what I think about that. I agree with you. Also, I agree with you, kind of like when I said, I think that it's very important to say that the government should be able to enforce it, like what happened in New York, because you are endangering the population. It's not a choice like, oh, I am just hurting my child, but it's also hard to <coughs> think about it. But it's not like you're just hurting yourself, you're hurting your whole community. So the government should have control over these so they can protect it. And also, I do agree that information is a key piece to solve this problem, but you cannot explain to people who don't want to understand it. Like Michal said earlier, it was this article that said that it causes autism, and then there was a retraction, and nobody cared. They were like, oh no, it causes autism, I'm not going to vaccinate my children. So I think that, yeah, they also should focus in education and information, but not compromising the part where you have to protect the community first. The government should force the citizens to, to vaccinate themselves because I think we need to protect our society. And by protecting our society is vaccinating each one of the citizens of the country because otherwise people can get... How is it on the hill? You can spread, that spread the, a disease or anything, and I think not most of the people, or in Mexico, not everyone has the, uh, has education, and not everyone has the money and the resources to to have education in their life. So one so one thing that I think that would be a good solution it would be that when the citizens go to vaccinate themselves, they can the doctors can explain them why they should vaccinate themselves and all the pros and cons and that's when people will know why it is important. For example, in Mexico, all the vaccines are gratuite and almost, you can say, accessible for all the zones of the country. And in my opinion, the government can obligate people to vaccinate themselves because it's not fault de los que sí tuvieron la opción y sí tuvieron la oportunidad de vacunarse, que se les contagie un virus o bacteria, por la gente no que no tenga los recursos, porque todos en México, por ejemplo, tienen los recursos de vacunarse porque es gratuito, sino de los que no quisieron vacunarse por ignorancia o por alguna otra razón. Ok, so it's not fair. Ok, in México, vaccination is free. So everybody can go to a health center and get a vaccination. So it's not uh, fair for people that not get a vaccine because of not knowing or because not to spread a disease while it's really free. It's not that they need resources to get the vaccine. So it's not I think because it's available. No, I yeah, mean, I, yeah. But I, I think what they argue that if people are against it, it doesn't matter that it's free. If they have arguments, that they are against. So, if you decide not to vaccinate, you're not hurting anybody unless you're not vaccinating your children, because then you're not giving them the right to choose, which. That's another. That's a whole other dis uh, discussion because they're too young to decide what they want for their health. But if you if you don't want to vaccinate, you're not hurting anybody because if you choose to vaccinate, that's your choice. If you and if you don't choose to vaccinate, then you're not hurting anybody at all unless other people don't have the ability to vaccinate. 
then that's the problem. If they want to get vaccinated and they don't have the ability to, and then there's other people that are not vaccinated by choice, then that's where the government should come in and give the people that want to get vaccinated free vaccines like it's here in Mexico. Blacks and whites, like agree or disagree. There may be some uh, spaces or some places where, I don't know, we have a small community, let's say 5,000 people, 10,000 people, and they live at the top of a mountain in Oaxaca. And they don't, they don't have a school, they don't have a very good educa ed education system. So maybe, even if you try to explain them, uh, as I said, not everybody will go to a TED Talk, not everybody will read a poster, not everybody. But we live in a republic where each state can have their own laws, their own uh, like small version of the government following the law, of course, of the, the general law in the country. But there will be some places where different measures can be adopted. And so uh, if somebody got elected as the leader of this specific place and he knows or she knows that their citizens will not understand even if they get an explanation well then can then obligations uh, measures can, can be taken and they can force them or enforce them to take vaccines even if they don't know about them but in in larger places in cities in in places with good ed education systems and also always following human rights people should get the chance to follow their own decisions when they already know why they are deciding on each side, not just because they want to. I was watching a documentary about this topic uh, last week, <laughs> so I have it like a little bit fresh. And we, we are individuals, and we have individual rights, and we have our right to choice of our bodies, and all this stuff that I agree with. But we also choose to live in a society. When we live in a society, we need also to have rules as a society, and we need to accept that these rules will need to be accomplished because we are accepting to live in this society. And one of these uh, rules are vaccinations. Why? The reality right now in most developing countries, for example Mexico, is that mostly anyone has the vaccination for a lot of the, uh, different diseases because of different political reasons, economical reasons, it doesn't matter. But if you have, do have the opportunity to do it, if you choose and you refuse to do so, you are endangering the people that don't have this opportunity. I agree with the fact that you need to also enforce that all these resources can go to the poor people that don't have this opportunity to get vaccinated. But you also need to enforce the people that don't want by choose getting vaccinated, that they need to do so. And by enforcing, I'm not saying like literally obligating these people to get vaccinated, uh, but, for example, different measures that uh, were taken in the United States, for example, I think it was in Washington, or I, I don't remember, that if you didn't vaccinate your, your child, he couldn't go to school. Mm -hmm. These types of measures, I think, that are the ones that can actually help, not literally forcing, but kind of. And that's how we can start eradicating uh, different diseases, because you see uh, in New York or, or in the world that there are diseases that are that were eradicated and are now reappearing and mutating and being stronger. So I think that yes, as a government and as a society, we choose to live with certain rules. And when we choose to live with certain rules, we have the right to put this type of, of, of rules. The last thing that I want to say is that what Dylan said about getting vaccinated by choice and then you're not affecting anyone else or not getting vaccinated and you're not affecting everyone else because you are, because the people around you are vaccinated it could sound right but actually not all the places in the world are like Mexico and not everyone in the world has the opportunity to get vaccinated so when someone get to have the opportunity to choose between getting the vaccine or not getting it and he or she chooses not to get it so they are endangering the lives of the people that cannot get the vaccines that don't have the opportunity because there are places in the world that the vaccines cost a lot of money and there are people that cannot get them so you're actually you are endangering, endangering someone else's life and you said that for the problem is not that we are not the same as people who are just for a moment and quite educated, who went to school, 
who learn something in by knowledge of that, still believe more about sex in social media than what the doctor said. So it's not that as simple as I'm gonna explain it to you because they are just like you're lying to me, you just want to I don't know, further your own agenda or something. You you just said what I wanted to finish with. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Because if you remember the last video, the kid that was protesting against his mother said that she used the information she found in Facebook. And they, it's something that we have to be aware of, and I think you learn it here very well in this uh, school, to learn about using reliable resources. Not to rely, I heard my neighbor, she's so good, she knows. I heard from her that, and this is why I will choose this, uh, this or that. And they have to let me just, one argument that they didn't say very important is for the government, for the government, what is cheaper? To get the vaccine or to get people sick in the system and an outbreak and uh, to cure people in the hospitals? The vaccine is cheaper. So that's the reason why here in Mexico they actually obligate people because it's, it's cheaper not, not curing the people but preventing the, the disease in war. I want to differentiate between the, first, the question we asked at the beginning, which was more scientifically, then the question that we ask here, which is more a question of a democratic society, how we should behave it all, how, should, how can we decide? And the decision is usually by voting. And both, all the, all the things you said from all the groups is very highly respected and understood and there is no, as you said, as one of you said, there is no one clear cut answer. It's a, this why it is a, a dilemma and I think an interesting one. So thank you so much for participating.